This conference will now be recorded. Hey, what's going on? Trade with Traders, Flex Trades here. I hope everybody had a great start to the week. A lot of opportunity today. We saw a big follow through on broad market. A lot of the setups that were strong toward the end of last week had some follow through momentum into today. We had some uh, surprise moves today. There, there was a bit of everything. Today was one of those days where it kind of just felt like everything kind of worked. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna break down broad market and then I'm gonna get into the individual setups that I'm looking into tomorrow, whether it's a new trade idea or if it's a follow through on an idea that I had from last night. Um, as always, this is my kind of roadmap for you guys. This is my thought process. This is my game plan. This is what I've done to prepare going into tomorrow. And it's really just kind of that in-depth perspective um, into these thoughts, these theses, these, these ideas that I'm generating. Um, so never take any of this as financial advice. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm simply sharing my opinion, my game plan, and my insights and perspectives. Let's dive into it. Let's, let's get it started. Uh, as always, I like to start with broad market. Here's the S&P, here's broad tech. Big breakout today in broad tech, and I went over this last evening. I gave the levels pretty clear and defined. Uh, the 370 was the breakout level, and then that 360 area was that breakdown level. Um, clear as day breakout um, action today, and then the S&P, same thing. I identified that, that, that recent low as that breakdown level recent high is the breakout level, so same type of deal. We crossed over the breakout spot and um, good volume support. It, the, the, the trend, everything looks beautiful. Everything's in place. We've been saying that for a couple of days now. Ever since that washout last week when we went down and tested that 50 uh, simple moving average. So we look good. Everything's good, right? Well, that's that's the part of this where I'm going to start talking where some of you guys might, might not love what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyways. The market's starting to feel kind of euphoric. And when the market starts to kind of feel euphoric, typically that does mean it could last a little bit longer. But usually what that starts to insinuate for me is that we're close to a, a relative peak before, you know, whether it's a, a washout or a brief pause, digestion, whatever. Um, I don't think we're anything crazy extended at this time. QQQ, we're about three and a half percent extended from 50 SMA. SPY, we're about 3% extended from 50 SMA. So there's room for some more extension. Um, but the, today was one of those days where it felt like euphoria was kind of settling in a lot of these setups, um, especially something like a um, NVIDIA, which I'll talk about in a moment. But, you know, I, you know, I'm not here to, to say that to, to to tear anybody out of their their trade theses or whatever you, whatever have you, but I, I'm simply reminding you that when we get to these hyper extension, which we're not there yet, I don't want to make it sound like we're hyper extended, but we are we are breaking out, and it's just something to keep in mind as we break out. Okay, looking across individual names. Um, are these things too extended? Are they supported? You know, you have to look back at the broad market, but broad market looks good. Um, it's just something to keep in the back of your head over the next several days, whether or not we have a, a, a brief pause up here at this breakout spot. That'd be the ideal scenario. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Ideally, we have a day or two where we kind of pause, you know, uh, uh, narrow, narrow range, a uh, couple days, one, two days, digest, and then and then follow through with that. Um, going into individual names, obviously BABA is the big one that I'm still trading, uh, talking about. I feel like the game plan from last evening was just about as spot on as it could have been. Um, from last night, I, 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 I mapped out my thoughts. I went in depth to break down kind of the five minute intraday time frame. So here I'm, I'm zooming in now um, on the five minute time frame over the last several days. I identified those those key areas. Obviously the uh, the close from Thursday, which is right there around 158. The 
164 level and then that 167 level. So the highs from last Thursday and Friday, the that that supply that I identified right around here from that was Thursday. Um, and then the the close from Friday, which I talked about and I outlined it, I visualized it last night, and I really drew something very similar to what we observed today. So I was I was kind of I was pretty pleased with how that played out um, because I feel like the scenario that I envisioned and that I drew up for you guys last evening was pretty spot on. Um, I played it exactly how I said I was going to play it. Um, I, I bought into the initial washout. Um, I kept a, you know, a respectable stop. Um, I added back some once we started to curl upwards, I added more into that 158 break. And now I wait patiently to see if we get up to that 164 test. Um, and then, you know, if there's any kind of digestion thereafter, and then same thing with that 167 test, see, you know, how it reacts to those supply levels. But those are the levels that I identified last evening. They're the same going forward. Um, again, if you're looking at the, the multi-day five minute time frame, we now have a higher high than the previous high. That's bullish. That typically is a sign of reversal. However, I'm not, you know, it's it's not safe to say with 100% confidence that the that the bottom is in place and that the reversal is completely confirmed. Ideally, we get up toward that 164 spot and then we pull back toward low 160s, retest, and then we get some strength off that and then retest that 164. That's again, remember what I said last night. That would be where I would get the confidence to size into this thing. It was a good trade today, um, but you know, that's still that's still very much my mindset with this trade at this time. So 164, maybe even 167. I want to see how it reacts. Ideally pull back, digest a little bit, and then go back up and retest that. And then that's where I can make a follow-through trade on that. Um, but again, I, I, I visualized also last night, I drew out for you guys the uh, the hammer candlestick. And today we got that hammer, that, that big low, that lower wick, that long lower wick, low of the day, right around 153. And then, and then we broke that Friday close around 158 and then had a little bit of follow through. So again, tomorrow, if we get up to a 164, 165, probably trim a little bit, um, wait for a pullback, wait for some digestion. And then above 167, there's room into the low 170s so that's going to be the follow-through trade that i'm looking to take on that but beautiful game plan so far congrats if you made if you made a trade on it if not so what on to the next one um there, there's a lot to learn though from what i was discussing last evening so go back review the review the footage um try to see what i was seeing and you know next time we get one of these types of plays perhaps um you could execute on it uh better but you know there again if you miss something there's always going to be a next time so don't don't feel discouraged and and one more note about this just like i talked about last evening when it comes to a pullback play when it comes to a bounce type of play i'm never going to have the type of size that i'm going to have on like a breakout type of trade um there's inherent there's inherently more risk with a bounce type of trade there's inherently more headache involved, um, more mental fatigue, if you will. Uh, but with that being said, you know, good opportunity today. Nonetheless, I played the, the contracts that I was outlining. I played the 140 strike um, and, you know, I averaged in around 155 common. I think the, the I think the, the contracts were trading around 16 or $17 around my average. And I want to say that those closed around 21 or $22. I think they closed around $22. So $16 to $22, not bad. Um, going on now though, so that's that's BABA -B -A going on. Tesla today, strong candlestick. Um, today's candle broke through the last several days of action. And now we're kind of right back up to where we were. So we had those two big washout days last week and then a couple days digesting and then bang, 
we're right back up to where we were, 706. We're only, you know, we're only a little bit of ways now below that multi-month inflection that we've been outlying, outline, outlining right about here at 730. And again, same type of deal. Above 730, there's some resistance supply up there in the 750, 755 range. But above that, you know, I, I can see this getting back up toward upper 700s. Um, and then I'll use this line to, to draw where I would want to see this hold on a pullback right, right around here at 690. Um, so again, with something like this, ideally we get a day or maybe two where we wash out back down toward that 690 level. And then we can uh, look to, to build a position back into this. At least that's how I'm looking at this. And then 730, that's still the, the, the big multi, multi-month inflection break that I'm eyeing. Um, but it looks good. Today's candlestick kind of got away from me. I had my alerts ping off and I was paying attention, but it just kind of slipped away from me. So at this point, I'm just going to kind of be patient. I want to see how it plays out. It's hard to envision that this just goes straight to 730, busts through it straight to 750, 760. Excuse me. So I'm, I'm very patient with it. Um, so again, ideally scenario A, something, something similar to what we saw. Um, I don't know. I don't see a good example recently, but a day or two of smaller range, shorter range, we collect some more data, perhaps a little bit of sideways, maybe even, you know, maybe this gets up to 720 tomorrow. But if we have a day or two afterwards where it's a little sideways and then we get some time to, to build a tiny little position and then it goes for that 730 break, I would scale back in at that 730 break and look for a trade towards 750. But it's a good setup. I like the way that it's looking right now. Um, Go back to a year. Uh, actually, let's do this real, real quick. I just want to highlight the weekly time frame because the weekly time frame is still really good looking. You see, it's really, it's really contracting here, really nicely. Um, so yeah, big spot right there at 7:30. Love the look though. It's a good look. Continuing on, Nvidia. I had a, I had a, I had an ideal scenario last night that I outlined, which was. Uh, uh, an inside candle today. Um, and I pretty much said, uh, if this thing gaps and goes, then I'm not going to trade it. And that's, a, that's essentially what happened. It gapped up a little bit and then it just went nonstop. So the trade got away from me. I didn't make a trade on it. It is what it is. I'm not butthurt about it. I'm not upset about it. It is what it is. Um, beautiful breakout chart though. I expect a little bit of follow through, but at this point I'm patient for a pullback retest down toward upper two, 200s, you know, 208, 207, maybe 206, a pullback toward there over the next several days. Um, and, and again, that depends, you know, if this gets up to 230 tomorrow, then I'm probably not going to expect a pullback all the way down to 205, you know, maybe 210 or, or 215 will suffice. But essentially what I'm looking at at this point is the blow off, and then I'm going to be patient to, to nail that pullback. So no set in stone game plan really here, just kind of waiting patiently for a pullback. AMD, nice candle today. Um, we're getting back up toward that, what is this recent high last week? A, a hair under 112, so right, right around 112. That's going to be that inflection that I'm watching going forward. Again, something like this, it's hard to imagine that we get a candle tomorrow that rips straight through 112 and, you know, we get to 115. It's hard to imagine. Um, so essentially what I'm looking at is going forward. I want to see, I want to see Fridays, last week's Friday and Thursday from last week, the high, which is around 106. I want to see that 106, uh, 107 area hold going forward. Um, but this, it has a good setup. And if this can just kind of continue to, to, condense in this in this um pennant here going forward it's a good look so you saw the big move and now this now kind of chopping in this wedged type of uh flag pennant whatever you want to call it um but it's a good look and uh again one of those where i don't have like a set in stone game plan it's more so 
I know the big spot, which is up there around 112, 112 and a half. And I know that I'm not really expecting it to just blow straight through that. So I'm kind of patient to see where this goes in the next couple of days. But that's the big, that's the big level that I've identified right around, right around here. Continuing on now, NVAX, beautiful move over the last two days. And today's candle, I outlined this one last night on the watch list on the game plan. Big gap, uh, or, I'm sorry, a decent sized gap up, a little bit of a pullback. You see that indicated in, in that lower wick. And then an all day strength, high day close right there around 251. Um, the, the spot that I identified, the, the multi month inflection is right right above us now, right at 260. Um, gonna highlight it right there. Um, so again, same thing, game plan hasn't really changed. Obviously I'm gonna raise my stop, my risk at this point. Uh, I know yesterday I said risk was gonna be around 220, 215, something like that. Um, I think at this point I'll raise that risk up toward like 230, 235 or so. Uh, through, through that 260 level, it's you know if, if volume is supportive of it this can get a quick move toward 280 290 something like that um but again something like this i'm not greedy with it i don't have super big size with it but i'm not going to be greedy with it um at this point my options contracts are up probably about a hundred percent so that's a nice trade for me regardless of if i'm up a million dollars or if i'm up you know a thousand dollars a thousand or I'm sorry, a hundred percent is a hundred percent. You know, don't measure that based on the dollar amount. You know, a hundred percent is a hundred percent. I enjoy taking profit at any type of profit. Uh, so I'm not being greedy with it, but 260 levels, the the multi, the multi-month inflection. Um, and then one last setup that is new to my radar is this DLPN. This is this is an NFT stock had a huge run up back in March from five dollars to thirty plus dollars, and now it's spent the last five months digesting in this channel. Um, but what's interesting is this volume here and this candle here, right? And then now this consolidation channel. So we were in this channel here, right? And then we had that big volume bar, that big candle. And now we're in a new channel. Um, so essentially what I'm waiting for now is this kind of, what is that? Around 11 and a half, just a hair above, uh, a hair below 12, call it 11 and a half. That's kind of the, the inflection I'm looking to break. Um, I think, especially if there's volume to support the 11 and a half, $12 break, I think that that could get a, a quick pop toward 14, 15, 16 bucks, something like that. Um, for me, the risk is pretty, pretty easy to define. It's going to be around nine and a half, upper $9, nine and a half or something, something in that area. But for me, the risk to reward, um, I'm risking about a dollar, um, to my downside and the upside potential reward is, you know, four to six dollars. So it's, it's kind of a one to four, one to five, one to six risk, risk to reward type of ratio trade. Um, but it's a good tight, real tight setup and an interesting sector. Um, so for me, it's simple risk. And if I hit my risk, I, I sell for a loss and I move on with my life. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's the game plan. Nothing, nothing too new to talk about. Um, I know I, I, t I brought up a couple new, new setups, but um, for the most part, tomorrow is going to be, you know, if, if we get that follow through on BABA, BA, if we get to those, those key levels I've identified, if we test those, if we pull back, if there's strength and we go back upwards, maybe perhaps there's another trade to make on those. But so far, so good. Game plan has been solid. And then uh, Tesla, fingers crossed for a couple inside days before we get to that 730 uh, inflection break. Um, and those are really the main ones that I'm paying attention to because I think NVIDIA and a AMD are going to be a couple days away from getting the setup that I want, but I just want to put them out there because I am watching them. And uh, yeah, just keep in mind, market is getting, 
is getting euphoric again. So keep that in mind. Um, know your risk. Know what what you're willing to lose, what you're willing to 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 you know if, if everything goes south in your trade, it, it, shit hits the fan. You know you know where to sell, take your loss, and move on. And just remember to keep your emotions out of it, keep your personal bias out of it. No one's out to get you. The market's not out to get you. Um, and with that being said, I hope everybody has a fantastic Tuesday. I'll be in touch as always. If there's anything new that pops up on my radar, I'll be the first to let you guys know. But that's it for, for this video. Peace and love, guys. Have a good evening.